So I watch this game like you look at this first play and look at how they don't want to leave our guard. They don't want to give up a three, which gives Jarrell the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And we all know Jarrell's about unstoppable down there. But Jarrell, we're going to see throughout this game, this is a super physical team. What, what did you think of the guys you played against in this game, Jarrell? They were really strong. You know, it was a game where uh, the game before we played Kansas State, and you know, I had a big game here, so I felt that, you know, coming into this game, that I was going to do the same thing, but obviously there wasn't a kick. Yo, can y'all can y'all hear me, yo? <laughs> yo, I've been on for like five minutes. Still got the droid. <laughs> no, can y'all y'all see me, yo? Oh, so shy, Tyree. Y'all can't see me. Yeah, yeah we like can. Yeah. Oh, y'all can see me. Yeah, I think we got a talk. <laughs> hey, hey, Shizzy. Ty, what's going on with you? Yo, what's popping, Shiz? <laughs> How you been? I'm chilling, cuz I'm in the crib. What you been up to? <laughs> Nothing, man. Everything's good. Just breaking down the game here. Eli, what's up? <laughs> what's up, Coop? Hi, great to see you, man. Hey, Rel still can't talk. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting. Uh, uh, I think the Athletic just did uh, an article about this game and about... Uh, Tyrone's part in it, and they asked a lot of questions about Tyrone, and you can see right now, man, Tyrone kept us loose, kept us laughing. He'll definitely keep us happy. Y'all can still see me on the screen now? Yep. Yep. You know, I've never been on this job. <laughs> so, Ty, tell me why you waited. I think if I skipped the floater shirt. Yeah, Shit, cracking up. <laughs> Uh, but why do you wait so long, and how do people get one? Uh, I really waited so long because, you know, I was really trying to get on the floor and playing and all that. You know, Corona time really got, gave me the chance to sit down and really, like, think about doing it and gave me the time. And I'm really – everything ordered already. I'm really just waiting on the stuff to, uh, to get here. Good. Due to Corona as well, you know, stuff getting pushed back, so – I just got, I'm really just waiting on the uh, stuff to be delivered. Excellent. What is, so how do we get one once they're in? Or order? Uh, I, uh, I'm making a website right now. It should be, uh, I'm almost really done it. So when the stuff uh, get here and uh, everything here, I'm going to just post it. And you ahead of like the whole Southwest Philly Fuller website to, uh, to get the socks and everything else I'm going to have on there. Tremendous. Tremendous. So Coach Bloom talked about the unselfishness. There were like three touch passes on that last possession. And yeah, we the we the we the first Golden State team, man. They took our style of play. Yeah, yeah. Why yeah. The, you know, the, the whole, guys the whole NBA play pressure. like us right now. That's what I was gonna say. Talk about that a little bit more. How we played and how that compares to what you guys have seen all over the world. He just was like so versatile and we all played we played like Miami Heat. We played with that heart. So we any any night we could be anybody. I just thought this team like just like a perfect team. Yeah. So right here, you know what they're doing. You see how Ramon got that easy one? Mississippi switched on the ball screen. What do we to tell you guys, you guards, Tyrone and Tyreek, if a big guy switched on you? Do you remember? You drive them. I so. Go. You just drive them. And Reek, one time later in this game, you actually try to pass it into Jarrell with a small guy on him, but they got him surrounded. That's why it's a guard that's got to make play. That was a great contest by Ramon. By the way, if you guys see anything on the game you want to talk about, just bring it up. I, I blocked the oop this game, too. <laughs> yeah, I definitely blocked the oop. Oh, yeah. But you, but you know what I think the biggest play of the game was? When, when, when Sam hit that and one three. 
And then it's coming up. I, I didn't watch this game since it happened, and I watched it yesterday. And then that next play after Sam hits that three, Jarrell gets the putback on a missed free throw. Uh-huh. And that's what tied it. If Sam yeah. wouldn't have hit that three, I think that should probably have been over. Yeah. Yeah, we were down five then. We're going to see you later. You had two gigantic steals. Yeah, I should have dunked that, man. I should have been dunking more, man. <laughs> yeah, th this was a game of muscle against skill. I mean, Ole Miss, they, they hurt us in the paint just because all positions, they're jacked. But they weren't skilled. Besides Henderson, they didn't make threes, and they missed a lot of free throws, too. Not about Marshall Henderson. That's what I was about him. Yeah. And yeah, they got, like, everyone on their team looks like a football player. And they ran a lot of nice places around the hill for trying to play crazy. bully ball. Uh, Murphy got drafted to the Ravens. Who? The power four on his team. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just see him on. They had him on ESPN. They were saying he, uh, he went to Ole Miss. Yeah, he yeah. Got now, right? Who's that, Jarrell? Uh, the power four, Murphy, I think. He on, he on, I think he's on the coast, right? I don't think he's playing in the NFL now, but he got drafted by the uh, the Baltimore Ravens when we first got out of college. Oh, no, no, somebody somebody from VCU that we played against. Uh, got oh, He's on the oh, coast. Oh, he's crushing it as a tight end for the Colts. You know what I'm talking about, yeah. yeah. I mean, that was just, you're going to see so much great passing in this game. That was a great wide open shot that Tyreek created for Sam. Just the sharing of the ball was unbelievable. I think that was our other strong suit. We had an unselfish team too, like for all the guard play that we had. Yeah. And, and it's really, you guys knew how good the other guys were. Everyone trusted each other. And because we, we were only playing seven, eight guys and you top six played a ton, like you never felt under pressure to have to do something because you knew you were going to get more than your chances. Mm -hmm. So that's big time by Rohan. So why don't you guys talk about Rohan a little bit? Just free association, like that play. Go ahead, Rohan. Talk about Rohan. It. Rohan won that game. That uh, Boise, the game before that for us. Uh, what game we played before that? Kansas uh, State. Kansas State game, him and Ralph, he really got like two key, but he really only one that got like a field goal in the second half. Ralph got like a layup in like three minutes or something like that. Yo, Maul, Maul had like 18 every game, every yeah. game. Oh, and why don't Ty Tyrone and Tyreek, your skill level was so high, we could shoot from NBA range. We played together. Talk about the pits. Tell everyone what the pits were with you guys and Coach Bailey and what your individual workouts were like and what the mentality was like? Uh, that was just us uh, taking on that undersized role and knowing that we had that uh, we pretty much had to be the toughest team no matter who we played. You know, we were a lot of times we were uh, we were undersized. So Coach Bailey tried to implement like we got to do we got to have something that sticks out about our team. And for the most part, it was just pressuring the guards and making sure that any ball handler we went up against was like, uncomfortable at all times. So that's why you see us on defense most of the time. Like, as soon as somebody cross half court, we're kind of pressuring them. Or Moan's picking up somebody full court, like, to make, make sure the other team was as uncomfortable as they could possibly be. So, we were running cutters there, trying to get the ball right below the free throw line, and we were cutting guards through there. Great cut, Ty. And, Ty, I remember your four, one of your first games against Iona. You had almost 30 points, and a lot of them were on cutting to the basket. People talk about your one-on-one -on -one ability, but you were a great mover without the ball. And if you saw an opening, you just cut to openings. Always when my mom was driving, I usually cut to the road. I got like a lot of those in my so What's that, Ty? It's hard to hear you. 
Ty, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah, and now we can. Yeah. I said, I said. You became a master of. Having a hard time. Ty, you hear us? Yeah, let's look at this. Hey, game. Mike went out. Uh, Andrew must have died. <laughs> Y'all can hear me, right? <laughs> yeah, I hear you, Tell the rally shit. That's Ash. What's up, cool Ash? What's up, fellas? How y'all doing? Hey, Coach. You went ahead. Good to see you guys, man. Good to see you, Coach Ash. Coach G, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, hanging out with my guys. This is inspirational right here, man. I need, I need, I need to watch this. Hey, my bad. I got a lot going on over here right now. Yeah, Ole Miss is playing some serious volleyball. There, everything's inside the arc, into the paint. Really strong physical team, but at the end of the day, our quickness and shooting went out. Lots of switching, the four guards. Look at Rohan battling the post. Tyrone. Yeah, I think, I think Rohan might have been the most annoying defender we had. I don't think anything like him when he, was, when he was on the floor. So Rohan, we all know, was recruited because of his heart, his toughness, and man, did he ever live up to it. Especially here, once Steve Zapp got hurt, so with Steve, we had the luxury of playing big, Jarrell and Steve together, or going small. But when Steve went down, man, was Rohan ever the next man up in. Super tough, huge play, especially defense. Look at Sam front in the post. That's like Villain or Ramon. That's like you guys did at Villanova, Ash. Don't let those big guys post you. This 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 team remind me a lot of the Villanova teams with with Lowry, Foy, Mike Nardi, Alan Ray. You just had four dynamic guards on the floor that could all dribble, pass, and shoot, and who were all tough as nails. We we I think, I think that was the look we was going for. <laughs> it was. We we tried to go that way. We got the perfect guy, frankly. These plays are so special. We, we continue to get good players, but not another group like this. And it actually hurt our recruiting sometimes. For example, Chris Mack at Xavier. Uh, this is a story. Mason O.T., one of the best players in the country at Baylor now, was one of many players that wanted to come to LaSalle. But Coach Mack just told me, because he was from Cincinnati, man, he ain't like Tyrone Garland. Look at Ty there with the steal. <laughs> Like, I know. Like, like that, man. We're such high level that a lot of good players wanted to come, but they didn't think they could compete with this group or match this group, and they set the bar almost too high. Yeah, hey, I wish we had four years together, man. That would have been crazy. Woo. Front in the post. Another huge Rohan play. Another huge Rohan play. Yeah, Rohan gave me my first serious injury, man. He gave me a concussion. Almost <laughs> killed me in, in uh, preseason that one year. I don't know if you get that. Ty stealing the ball. So what we were was as quick a team as I've seen in college basketball. Ty, it, Tyrone, Tyreek, Sam Mills, or Ramon would be the quickest player on most teams. We had four guys who could be the quickest player on almost any team in the country. And then you put Jarrell and Steve inside with all that space around them, and the role definition was perfect. But the foot speed was ridiculous. Tough shot, good defense by DJ. And the thing about DJ, he might not have had the – Super foot speed like the other guards, but he had unbelievable mental speed. He could see yeah, the game. We need a DJ. DJ put the team together for real. Without him, we wouldn't have been as versatile. 
other people. Talk about DJ. Could be anyone. I love DJ. I love I DJ. 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 DJ was like an undersized stretch uh, four man. Yeah, like he, I don't he, think people. I don't sorry, think people thought sorry, he was like a big Michael. man, but he could guard. Yeah, he could guard like one through five for real. He was our Draymond, except, except for what uh, Shane Larkin though. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we ain't gonna speak on that. <laughs> that was, but that was all of us with Shane Larkin. We had four guys that were unbelievably fast, but. Larkin to me was by far the quickest guy we played against. What what are you guys he started, doing? He started doing what Brian be doing now? He was waiting until he got the DJ. He was making DJ <laughs> oh, right, right, right. They were waiting on the switch. That's right. They was, was on DJ. <laughs> I was like, damn. Every time Shane got the ball, ISO, ISO. <laughs> He's doing the same thing in your league, though. So we just we, Yo, we just the first ones to get it. I don't even feel that's DJ Cool now. He getting fifty and all that. Yeah, for for people who don't know, Shane Larkin was an All ACC guard at Miami, and Miami might have been the the team that gave us the the toughest time all year. And Larkin was uh, Larkin was great. That we should have beat them too, though, man. We had that game. Coach Bloom, why don't why don't we do some free association? What what, what about Tyrone? Just, just talk about Tyrone off the top of your head, Coach Bloom, and then Coach Neal. I think for this team, he was the perfect. It was the perfect role for him, coming off the bench and giving us scoring, giving us energy, and no other team could match what he brought off the bench. So we were good to start, as you spoke about, but he gave us that boost. That we didn't, we didn't lose the beat. We didn't even stay the same, but we got better when he came in. And that's what made this team special. Well, it's six starters. When, when you yeah. can get better when you bring a guy in the game, and that's what Ty did for us uh, all year. Like, when he came in, we got better. Yep. What's up, Coach Neal? Any thoughts? Yeah, I just felt every game um, – that we went into the whole season, um, I felt that we had as good or better players in every team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when we played Boise State, um, I remember four minutes into the game just thinking that there's no way they can keep us in front of them. Um, I just thought we were that elite speed-wise and shooting-wise that, you know, no matter who we played, we were going to have an advantage. Yeah, Mississippi hurt us on the glass in this game. That's, but you know, Coach Bloom said something really interesting to me. I'll never. Forget. And again, when Steve was healthy, we had a good big lineup. Um, but with our small lineup, Coach Bloom made the point once he went back to St. Joe's when they had Jameer, and we could talk about Jameer too, Reek and and Ty, but um, they were number one in the country, but they were a bad rebounding team because they were great at everything else. And if you look at our team stats, we got more assists, we shot more free throws, we shot better from three, we got more steals, we got more loose balls. We were superior in everything except for rebounds. So if I tell someone, listen, you might struggle with one stat, but all the other stats are going to go up, you would take it. Yeah, I feel like all the good teams, they give up something. Like, you can't do everything to it. You know, right. great. That's, that's, like, rare to see that. And you look at these threes we're getting, man. They're wide open. Man, he had all big green lights. They turned the ball over, so we, we got possession. So, Henderson, we play, we defended him pretty tough. And when you're locked in on someone, the only time you can get an open three is I don't know, man. Ty, that was a good drive. This was a 50-50 call. Yeah. The, the Marshall Henderson kill us this game? I, I feel like he didn't really have that many points this game. The second the second half, he went on like an 8-0 run by himself. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, that sounds That's about the right. Thing. He so ain't really be letting you get off. What do you guys remember about – because, you know, I never wanted to give anyone any bulletin board material. 
and I, I was not happy when DJ after Kansas State did the, the land shark thing. What do you guys remember about DJ and the whole, oh, another steal by Todd. I missed it. I should have dunked that one you too. Ain't. You <laughs> ain't. Ty, you would have been an unbelievable deep back with your strength, quickness, and anticipation. Man, I'm thinking I should have played. I should have played free safety, cuz we would have been great. Another wide open hook off the back of him. Another second effort for Ty. What do you guys remember about the whole land shark thing? He just did it, I guess, huh? Yeah, I, I couldn't believe he won that game, man. I just was, I didn't, I couldn't believe he shot all foul shots that had. I think that gave us some extra gas for the uh, for when we played against him, though, because I know that I know they ain't like that when DJ did that. I feel like that just hyped it up a little bit more and gave us the feel we needed. So there we are in transition, and you know. Big time finish by Reek, getting to the basket, doing what we do. But watch oh, earlier, something I love. DJ, Mr. Fundamental, just grabs the loose ball. Hey, Coach G, I think Garvin is in the building. Hey, Garvin, how are you? <laughs> We're hey, good. Hey, Garvin, hey, Garvin hey, yeah. Garvin, our, our okay. man. Dang, Garvin, what you oh, a <laughs> Where you live at? Steve Jobs in the neck. Where you live at, cuz? Garvin. Garvin a millionaire. Yeah, we gotta pull up on Garvin. Yeah, yo, yo, I told you I need a job, bro. I got you. <laughs> what's up, cuz? <laughs> Say hey, uh, Garvin, what's up, bro? Yeah, what's tell, up? Tell, tell the people what, what you're doing nowadays. Uh, I'm still working in finance. Um, Worked at Blackstone right after uh, after I left LaSalle. Uh, worked there for about five years, and now I'm working at Glenmead uh, it's in Center City, Philly. Um, right now, working from home, but uh, so is everybody else. Um, my wife and I, we just bought a house in Lansdale this year. So, yeah, life's pretty All good. Right. The real question we want to know, how much money are you worth, are you worth right now, man? That's what we really need to know. <laughs> Get to the important stuff, got. man. Guard, hey, guard, just tell the truth. I predicted the future, right? Yeah, not as much as you guys, <laughs> collectively. <laughs> Good to see you, bro. Uh, likewise. So, Jarrell, are you there? Yeah. Jarrell, talk about our breakdowns with me, you, Steve, almost the dunk tie. Um, I know. Talk about going up against Garvin and Jermaine and Matt Sheehan with the dummy every day. Man, I, I feel like Garvin, Jermaine, these guys got you ready big time. Well, yeah, they really prepared us for, you know, just going up against, you know, the competition. I don't think nobody in the A-10 was as strong as Bird. So, you know, <laughs> it was 50%. Bird was a wrestling. You know, it was still, you know, hot. So, I got it. Taylor Dunn's box out on this. So again, you look, you know, at, at guys who make huge plays, and man, you love that. This is like a textbook box out. Look at this box out. Physical, yeah, driving yeah. back. And we always locked in. Tied with three seconds left. Man, if you don't do all these little things, you ain't winning. Great job by Taylor. Garvin, you know, what, Garvin, you know what the game. These guys, asked, these guys had this question earlier. What What do you think made this team so good, Garvin? Yeah, I was here for that. Uh, no one said me. I was a little annoyed about that. Um, <laughs> oh, I didn't. I, didn't. I thought you just hopped on. Yeah, no, I, was here. I saw you guys. Um, yeah. What makes this team so good? Uh, it was the chemistry for sure. I mean, someone uh, I think Reek said it, but it was it was definitely the chemistry both on and off the court. Um, you know, we were just kind of like brothers in the locker room on the court. It just kind of carried over um, to our play, you know. But also because I was there. Um. <laughs> So. 
again. So Rohan, second effort. We're going to get a three off of this. And look at the touch pass. <laughs> yeah, Mon really was. Yeah. <laughs> 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 from the I mean, Ramon, unbelievable player. Un yeah, remember Mon shot from the Xavier sign? <laughs> <laughs> You don't remember when we was in Canada, dog? That's all he kept doing. He, he was airballing, though. He wasn't hitting when we was in Canada. He passed before too much later. He's passing out. Well, he shot it from half court at St. Bonaventure and made it, too. But, there's a, but this is what we did, man. The, the, the pass, uh, I mean, Rohan's rebound to DJ to kick out. I mean, just a lot of good unselfish basketball, like you guys said. Coach, yeah. What game that you that you thought that we won and you said I know this team really could uh, go far? Which game? It was actually because you were sitting out Ty, and we had so much, uh, so many people coming back. It was the year before when Ramon was out with the concussion, and we were up by four. It's literally the maybe the most painful loss I've ever had, and that's saying a lot. The year before this, we're up by four at Villanova. With How about that? That's the Nova game. And, but Ramon's out. And mm -hmm. it's just we've been overtime. But then I think to myself, man, if, if we can be up the whole game at Villanova without Ramon and we got all these guys back and we got Tyrone Garland sitting out, man, yeah, and I, I actually, as heartbroken as I was about that loss, I said, man, we're going to be a brick. When we get Ty, all these guys are back. That, that, that's when Ty was actually the year before. And shout out to Earl Pettis, who was like, basically, yep. what we did is we had Earl, and we knew Earl was a senior, but then we knew Tyrone was coming in. So we, we knew that was one good player for another. So, yeah, man, I, I was sky high confident. And that year before, so we lost in overtime at Villanova lost in overtime to Temple. If we won those two games, we probably would have been in the NCAA tournament, the tournament before. before. Yeah. yeah. But, so like Rohan's offensive rebound or Rohan's charge or Taylor's box out, like what we did this year, we won every close game. We just won the close games, man. Or in the previous yeah. year, lost those close ones. But I, I even think our our senior year we lost five games like within four points. We probably have been in the same position again. Yeah. No question. There's the switch. Go to work. Nah, see, you should have went to work, Reek. Yeah. You're all surrounded. You got the big guy on you, man. Come on. <laughs> That's probably what you were saying right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how much I got to tell this guy? Hey, hey, coach, I'll tell you one thing. You you really ain't get, you got me ready for overseas, coach. I don't know who cursed more, you or them. I don't know. They be going crazy. Every What's play. That? Overseas. Hey, coach. Uh, coach, coaches overseas, I don't know who cursed you or them more. I don't know. They be going crazy. <laughs> Man. That's saying a lot. There's the switching. And DJ, foot speed, mental speed. Oh! Right up top, hey. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, what, though? You live... When you have guards who can make plays, you live with those mistakes. You don't want guys like second, like wondering, should I attack? Should I attack? Should I make this pass? Like, you guys were given freedom because you were good enough to give the freedom to. Like, you would make one mistake, but then do three good things afterwards. Yeah, man, Moan, rebounding, handling. 
Marshall Henderson really wasn't talking this game either. He was like quiet for real. Because we were on it. Well, I mean, right there. What are we saying right now? No, no switch, no help. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's known for all that trash talking on. He ain't do none of that against us. Yeah, he was trying to be our friend. He like talking to me. I'm looking at yeah, him like talking to everybody. We was on the line and all that. <laughs> I'm worrying about you. I thought you supposed to be tough. He's from Philly, bro. <laughs> you ain't from North, bro. You trading in your North car. Where I'm from? I don't know. Look, I got this fitted too. I'm from the county, bro. I say, relevant on the county now. <laughs> Rolling in the county with it, man. Yeah. We're neighbors now. Hey, bro, you had a game. <laughs> hey, bro, you had a game winner too. Yeah, the other day. I had what? a game. Hey, let's let's go around the horn. Same question that Tyrone asked. What game this season? And, and I want. Garvin, Jarrell, Ty, Reek, all four of you. What what game this what game stood out to you this year? And it could be more than one, but what game stand out to you the most? For me, I don't think it was a game. It was that stretch where we uh I think we played think we played Nova, VCU, and okay. Butler, like in a, in like a two week stretch or something. And we knocked all of them off. And I, I think that's that was it for me when I was like, Oh, this team's special, like we really got a chance. How about you other guys? Yeah, I agree with that. That's the same for me. I think the VC on Buffalo game playing versus but that, that same week we beat uh, two ranked teams that was, you know, top 20. After that, you yeah. know, we, we, had, we, we had something special. I think right after that we played we played UMass. I think we was like on the cusp of being uh ranked. We thought it'd be ranked top 25 if we would have beat UMass. We lost to UMass at the buzzer. Well, well, I think. Here's, a, here's a plug for Coach Ash uh, and their budget. Like, you remember, uh, and LaSalle did a lot of things to help us, uh, but that particular trip, remember the bus ride home from VCU? Like, it was a blizzard, and we got back like 3, 4 in the morning, and, man, we just weren't recovered in time to play UMass in a couple days. Yeah. We had a sick and <laughs> Yeah, we were sore as crap. But the other thing, like beating VCU, and you'll see it in this game, we could not be pressed. I mean, that's a big deal. VC, VCU, their whole thing is have it, press, press, press. Well, you guys are too good to cough up the ball. And when you met, when Mississippi tries to press us in this, that's not a problem either. Yeah, I think we look forward to uh, teams pressing us. Like if they did oh. try it, they yep. played our advantage. So I remember, too, like, here's some of the other close games. At St. Bonaventure, winning overtime. And I remember, Reek, you had food poisoning, right? Yeah, she has got a bad batch of uh, pregame meal. <laughs> <laughs> Took me out by halftime. I never figured that. You got you, uh, Chris Shiz out for that one, man. <laughs> Coach, Coach, you know what game I think? Huh? I think, I think the game... I think the game after we lost the Temple, we had to play Rhode Island. I think that's the game when I was like, we, we going to be good because we uh, needed that game. We couldn't lose two in a row. I, I remember, I, I just told you guys, you're right. One of our goals, and it only happened literally on the last game of the season. That we lost two in a row. At St. Louis and Butler, two great teams. But that was one of our goals, never lose back-to-back. -back. And I remember yeah. – was at GW and at Rhode Island. I told you guys, man, before we got off the bus, these are going to be tough games, but this is a must win. If we want to be in the NCAA tournament. These are the games we got to win. And you did. But I think the VCU game, winning that one, it really like told me, like, yeah, we could be anybody because nobody was winning in that gym. Yeah. I think we was like one of the only teams that beat them at home that year. Yeah. I remember their ball screen defense was so aggressive. They were blitzing, trapping. They jumped on us, and then we spread them out, went opposite, 
drive and kick, and you guys crushed them. He had an extra whistle in the crowd. They blowing the whistle. Yeah, remember that, John? I stopped dribbling in the middle of the play because I thought the ref called the whistle. <laughs> Every the time, every the floor. floor is just random, and you always stop. They, I know people walk like four or five times playing them there. I think it's like set up for them to do it or something. Reek stopped like <laughs> they call walk. I'm like, yo, that's cheating. Tough shot. Henderson's good, but man, we we didn't give him many easy looks. And if you look at us, even the threes we miss are good shots because of how you guys play together. Man, they started playing the zone. I didn't know that. Oh, they played zone mostly. And that's just that's just beautiful basketball, man. That's just tied to Ramon, like great player to great player. Fun. <laughs> but the ball didn't stick. You know, sometimes if a big switched on us, we would pound it, isolate a little bit. But as soon as we drew help, you guys shared the ball. Man, Mo had 19 in the first half. <laughs> that's, every, that's every game. Every game he had 19, 18 in the first half. Right, yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. He definitely used to go crazy. Talk, a bit about, talk about Ramon's leadership, just his energy and, like, how everyone knew he was a great scorer, great player, complete player. But what about his intangibles? What, how would you describe Ramon and what he, he gave us mentally and emotionally? Yeah, he just he just he just was like he just was the perfect leader that year, like on offense, defense, and he and he always backed up what he said. Like he led by example. Like everything he said, like he like he owned up to it. And even though he was the star, I saw him he had eighteen, then he passed the whole second half without even scoring. He could have went for thirty. So that year he just was like we was all about winning that year. So and he just was like the perfect leader for us. Yeah, I think he was. I think he's that emo that emotional leader that we needed. Like you, like you saw how hard he played. Like there's no way that you could like slack off and not give it your all while you was out there. I think that's a, a big thing that we needed. Like coming off the year before, how we uh, how we had before he got there. I think that's a main thing that we was missing. And he and Brad, that's the only person Rel listen to, bro. <laughs> hey, Rel, congrats, too. And that's a heck of a fine, Rick. The crazy thing I think, just thinking now, I think the the whole NBA play like how our team play now. Like the whole the style of the NBA, that's like every team's like trying to make that style of play now. Like undersized players, just like whoever get the ball, get a bucket, and have a a, a forward that can uh, rebound and that's tough in the paint. Like, every team is, like, trying to build their stuff like that right now. No question. Ty, talk a little bit about the story of the family that you got close with, you and Bloom in Kansas City. Tell people that story. Oh, yeah, the Cooney family, after, after that, after the tournament, uh, they just kept in touch with me. And, and I still talk to them from time to time, but obviously as things going on, you know, they probably busy. You know, uh, the family, they are, like, run a football team and, like, school as well. But it just was a family that uh, kept up with me after the tournament, and they was looking out for me, sending me letters, candy. A very uh, great family, and I uh, appreciate them. Love it. And they, they took a couple of road trips out to Philly the next couple years, so they, they stayed in touch. We, we had some LaSalle fans from Kansas City. Be right. Right here, you see, again, guards, you win in the turnover battle, the three-point battle. And then that first play of the second half, we went into Rel. Rel got the what, – what was that? Was that stat – what what do we call that play, Rel? Stat two or four? 
Yeah, I think I was dead too. So we really didn't run a lot of plays for our guards because they just were so good in space. But we had to run stuff to get rail the ball, and we had a lot of stuff to get it into the big fella. There you are, being strong down there, Rick. <laughs> so that, that's a big ass call right there. Watch the replay. So this, wow. is a, this is a trick. This they was they wasn't used trip. to that speed, man. They ain't used to that. That was a bad call, man. Flat out trip. He stuck his foot out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Shizzy got the great brain now. What's up, Shizzy? I'm moving back to Philly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that Bonnie Shiz? Like yeah. Your boy. Yeah. What'd you I say? I believe you up there, Shiz. Like Adam Sandler. <laughs> 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 All right, Ty. I'm not gonna start because we're on video. That's what Ron said. I know. <laughs> so that that was not a pretty play, but it was tough. Moan got in the traffic, ball deflected, but he didn't lose it. Reek cuts. <laughs> Hey, Chris Ash. Yo. You know, I'm mad. I In college, I ain't never get no wins over you. I, I don't like that. What, what was your game plan against us? Let you shoot the ball every time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd, you probably should be right? But us recruiting you so hard your sophomore year, it all started with Coach Ash. I mean, yeah, Coach all Ash started with Coach Ash. this guy's the next guy. Like, he's going to be the next great Philly guard. And as soon as Coach Ash told me that, man, we started camping out. It, it, took, him a couple games to, it took him a couple games to catch on, too. He wasn't trying to come through the B at first, man. He had to, he had to hear it. I was he had at to see a couple 30 balls go I off. I was at your first high school game at at, uh, at Pinwood. Stop it! Oh, <laughs> I can't stop game. off at Pinwood. You hear me? <laughs> Some <tough> games. Todd, <laughs> Todd, when you said you didn't get any wins against me, I thought you was talking about one on one. Uh oh! All right, all right. never mind. That used to fry you one on one. What? <laughs> that's the, that's big homie. He got big quiet. Homie. He is right. <laughs> Coach, you know, what, what, what I, before Kirby, that was the first person I seen shoot shoot that good. I ain't going. I, I think I think the statute of limitations on on uh on the recruiting violations is over now. <laughs> <laughs> coach, Coach Gash, what being entitled? Because you, you were sold, and then I became sold, but you were first. What, what did you see? Uh. Ty was, he was just always an aggressive scorer. Um, he was he was a, a great athlete. He had great speed and quickness. And he played with unbelievable confidence. So you know, those, the combination of those things just made him, you know, special at that age. And then being at Bartram where he was the man and he had the green light, he, you know, he had the opportunity to really showcase his skill. Um, in addition to uh, his cousin Byrne being on my back about recruiting him and offering him a scholarship early. <laughs> all those things. What? Yeah, Ramon just hit a backbreaker three from the hash mark on that previous one. That was a huge play. Yo, 
Mo Mo really did some unbelievable stuff. Like when we paid uh Dayton, he got five dunks in a row. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, the, it was on ESPN. He got five dunks in a row. We it was only 12 12 when we looked up at the score. There's the group reflected, Ty. Oh yeah, the oop. Oh, it caught up charge. You know what? Uh, I don't know if you remember this. Before you came, that you came to us as a grad transfer. I actually came to see Edgemont. You remember that? Darvin, do you remember? All right, Coach, can you repeat that? I, before you committed to Penn, I came down to the Stage Edgemont your, your senior year or junior year. You remember that? Yeah. That's the reason I, uh, after I was done at Penn, I, I definitely, I reached out to my coach back in the Bahamas, Coach Sears. I don't know if you remember him. Um, yeah. I asked him to put me in touch with you. Yeah. Uh, so we knew we needed another big guy. And, uh, man, we were so lucky to have you. And glad you got your masters in LaSalle. And that, you know, what people don't realize is behind the scenes, like, you got to we got to get guys ready. And you and Jermaine fumbling every day against Steve. And you got you at nine that way. Jermaine was six, eight, six, nine, 300 pounds of muscle. And I, I just think that you guys made us, and Bell and Steve in particular, much better players. Turn my camera off. Thank you. All right there, Ty. Yeah, I'm eating some, I'm eating some food right now. Yeah, there's a push off, Sam. That was great defense by Ruben. Pops off by You know, Sam's going to make this big shot here later. Why don't you guys talk about Sam Mills a little bit? He was our best defender, man. I think. Sam had a lot more to his game, though, but I think he kind of, like, when he found out that, like, like Coach Bell, he looked at him as our best defender, I think he really started, like, zoning in on being, like, a defensive stopper. And he took his day, I think he's one of the best defenders I've ever played with. And he's a dead-eye shooter. So, I think, like I said, I think we all we just had the right pieces, and Sam was another big piece to that we team. high-level guy. High-level guy. Like, all you guys, Coach Ash could talk about this. Like, you guys, I mean, Reek, you have lots of options. Darrell had lots of options. Man, Tyrone, unfortunately, I, th I thought Tyrone committed to us like five different times. And we finally got him, you know, like the sixth time. But I always wanted Tyrone. A lot of people wanted him. Sam, Sam had offers from Auburn, Georgia Tech, Northwestern, like, this was obviously Ramon had played in the SEC. These were high level guys. No, that's, I mean, that's the thing that you see once you get in the NCAA tournament. You're playing against the best players. And, and you can go into a game and you can know that you match up well, but not only match up well, but at multiple positions that. You know, you can put four guards on the floor that nobody can guard and can dribble pass and shoot, and guys are unselfish. Like, this, this is a great team, man. See, like, that was a great shot by Ty. Even our misses are open shots, and you look at the driving kick and the spacing, and it's it's great stuff. And and Jarrell was the perfect compliment to, to, to all you guys because he was a monster inside. Monster. Let me, Coach. Let me let me ask, let me ask you this question because, you know, I, I thought Stephen Zach was a was a huge factor on this team, and and I was I was concerned when he was hurt and, and he uh, wasn't able to play, but, but part of it I think <laughs> may have helped you guys a little bit 
because you guys went with the with the underdog mentality. What what do you think about that, Doc? Well, when we got hurt against George Washington, we thought our strength was we could play big or small. And we didn't want to go all big. We didn't want to go all small. What we would do is start the big lineup with Steven Jarrell. Then we would go small after the first meeting timeout. Whichever lineup was best, we would go with the rest of the game. So when Steve the coaches alone without the players in, in our office, up, we would – we just didn't know it. We could keep win. We did the controls to work. So it turned out working, but Steve took that big charge uh, in that overtime win at St. Bonaventure. He was, I think he might have led the rebounding that year. He was an all defensive team guy. And uh, we no way get to the NCAA tournament without Steve Zach. No shot. And I feel terrible he got hurt and couldn't play in it. But this is all right up. It just wrecked havoc on everyone once we went to a full game. But we don't get to the end of the tournament, not even close. To the end. Yeah, because we, even with me out, because he still, we still had to win games the first six games because I ain't even played the first six games. And we still yeah. won like six and one, something yeah. like that. Yeah, he went crazy in the opener. Steve had like a monster game against Delaware, an opener against a third all-conference big guy. Um, and it's interesting. As coaches, like this is one time, usually I'm more emotional being the assistants, but I remember Pat, uh, who loves you, all of you, but he was down, and I said, man, we can't be down. We can go to those other guys now and be like, man, we got problems. we got to be positive this team and once we did that we were lucky not to miss a beat because like you said the small lineup was impossible for people to deal with and maybe in some ways too like ash said when we got so we when we got to the NCAA tournament and you're playing bigger teams that being smaller and quicker ended up working to our advantage and coach, one more thing about Steve Zach. I don't know if you remember, but against Butler, you matched him up with Roosevelt Jones. And yeah. That was one of the few times in history that you mess or anybody messed Brad Stevens up. You didn't know yeah. what to do. <laughs> Great by Steve. Happy cutters again. Pass and cut, get the ball against the zone right under the free throw line. But you just see the ball movement. Perfect. Now they're going to try to bully us. If you, so, if you play small, your, your guards have to be tougher than the other team's big guys. And when you're watching this game, these guys try to take advantage of you in the post, and you guys are fronting the post and their forwards have to work to get the ball all the way out to 10 feet, that's advantage LaSalle every time. Yeah, I think besides Marshall Henderson, I didn't think nobody on their team was really skilled. Like, they just tried, like you said, they just tried to out-muscle it. You know? Yeah, and they had some success with that. I mean, they won the SEC tournament. And, I mean, that's their thing, man. They're Marshall Henderson and a team of football players. Mm. One, one of the things that, that that you talk about when you talk about playing small and you get to the tournament, SEC and, and Big Ten and, and, and ACC teams, they're not used to playing against teams that play small. All of, the, all of the teams that they play against in conference are all the same, right? So, you know, it's it's an adjustment, especially when you play small with, with high-level guards, right? It's... It's a challenge because somebody has a mismatch and then you just recognize who has the advantage and then you just break the defense down. I, I think that's why they're playing a zone. They don't think they can match up. And I think it's something you can't really game plan for. Them. And so like, you can't really reenact that in practice unless you've got like the actual players. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, did Kareem ever get on the call? 
so on subjects that's like simple. Yeah. Is Corinne here? Yeah, what do you yeah, I think even like the whole team, even down to the managers, I think we all just was locked in this year. Everybody was for one goal. We why, all wanted to win. Why don't you guys talk about the managers and OJ uh, Lewis, who was a walk on on this team? And why don't you guys, like, people probably don't know everything those guys and gals do. Why don't you talk about Morgan, Kareen, Andrew Ansel, OJ? Talk a little bit about what they did for us. I think the people that's like behind the scenes, like you said, like the managers or the wall phones, I think they, for the most part, they work just as hard as we did. Like, I think a lot of people think like being a manager is like an easy task. Like being a walk on is an easy task, but the walk on used to get beat down in practice. Like, they used to go through a lot. Even the managers, like, you know, as a coach, y'all, y'all make them work a lot. They got, they, they moving around the whole practice for the most part. So I think a lot of them, I mean, a lot of that helped us out all season, too. And they, they even practice with it sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, they didn't really have no days. Or they didn't have no easy days. Like, we came to work. They came to work, too. Like, we had to be up early. They had to be up early with us. And, and for no scholarship, I, I always say if the world were walk out as unselfish as OJ and Andrew and Morgan and Green, it would be a beautiful place. Sure. So... The floater coming up, this dude Holloway, man, like he was the career leader in SEC block shots. Like this, this guy was a, a rim protector for sure. Look at Ramon fronting. We doubled a little too far out. I think I'm mad at you over here, Tyrone, for not rotating down, but that double was too far out. But even that play right there, he just shows how much hurt Moan got. He just really just <laughs> – he wasn't going to let him make that layup. Yeah. Good point. Great point. And now I bet I bet he misses a free throw. Moan might see a play like that wins the game. Uh, if, if he – like, if Ramon – it's unbelievable, and you talk about why coaches go crazy, the difference between – Winning and losing is like nothing, right? It's like one play. Like you got to make every play you can because it's just close. Miss both of those. Yeah, Ramon actually that foul saved the basket. Man, that's great ball movement. I mean, look at that ball pop. And the trust, just everyone trusted. That's big and, that, and, that, and, that, and that that pass right there is where Rick told me the floater was open because that's how he said after the second swing is always open on that side from that play right there because he did it like two times. I, so I watched the game yesterday just to refresh myself. And on the floater, we'll talk about it. What great defense by Garrell on that contesting Henderson. Um but you and me switched sides on that. Yeah, we switched sides. Because I knew from that side I could drive better. And that's, right. what, and that's what Rick told me in the uh, the timeout. He says it's easy to drive on that side because it's easy off the second swing when we reverse it back around. And Tyrese. Yeah, I think we, during that timeout, we drew up like our, me, him, and Moan drew up like our own little play. Like we, we they, booked, they said they were going to switch sides like right before, the, uh, right before we did the handoff and everything. Hey, uh, that's just a little bit of over help. DJ stepped up. I actually think we had him defended. DJ gave a little too much help. But that's how, like, mostly they beat people because people used to always chase Marshall Henderson that far up them plays. They used to get about like eight of them a game. Damn, big bucket. Big shot right there. Huge shot. I 
Oh, oh, oh. Trust all season long with our poise, whether we fell behind or like we were just mentally consistent. Yeah, they take the lead here. We were up most of the game, but man, it didn't didn't phase us. I don't think none of them games I looked at the score until we was down by uh, by uh, Wichita. I never really looked at the score. I was like right. in another zone. I was just so locked in. I never looked really looked at the score. Like none of them games until we was down. Because we was up mostly every game. Until we was down, I was looking like, yo, the time going fast. Time go fast when you're losing. When we was up them games, the time was going slow. Yeah. Hey. And I just love the driving kick. Ethan got to constantly be on the hill. Big shot by Ty. Mm -hmm. They played good defense that time, man. That was not an easy shot. I, know, I remember you always used to say, though, in college, uh, in general, it's hard to stop somebody for a whole shot clock. So we I learned that. driving that you. From going over. Like, we just, man, you got good guards driving, kicking, kick and roll, drive. And sooner or later, you break it down. Mm. And this is a good episode. Everybody used to have so much, so much more fans than we did at the game. You know, they got their whole city at the game. I think that helped us too because we felt like we was against everybody. I think that really helped us not having no fans. Well, remember, the Kansas people were rooting for us after we beat Kansas State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That whole arena was filled with K State fans. Well, I'll tell you, it's so, Jarrell, we got to ask you this nine out of 10 in front of 21,000 people rooting against you from the free throw line. Man, <laughs> you think? Just. Tell me about Kansas State, Jarrell, and making those free throws. And I was in the free throws more than you thinking. Because if you, in a situation like that, if you think too much, it just put too much pressure on you. So I just, we just going to the line, you know, thinking like this is another free throw. So that was my so, main. So if Ty shot with the Southwest Philly floater, that was a floater there, Rick. You want to? Put the name on your floater? Nah, it's too late, man. The, the Southwest Philly floater lives on forever. I'm not even going to name it. I don't even remember that floater right there. The, the Yardley <laughs> floater? <laughs> I don't even remember that shot. But that's on the same side as the, the floater was. He been telling me that. That side was open. That's the only side we could drive from. We don't got no drives coming from the right. Yeah. So this is great help here, Jarrell. You help out. You see it on the replay. You put the ball out of bounds. Nice job, Jarrell. That's out. Yeah. I mean, they call out time. <laughs> Ash, were you at Nova or Xavier this year? I was at I was at Xavier this year, and I actually came to Dayton and watched your first game versus Boise in the tournament. I drove out. It was only, it was only like my two, right there. Five minutes drive. But you know, people talk about building a program, which is now Ash. But just think, like this run here. Like with five years before, when you're helping us recruit six years before, helping us recruit Tyrone as a sophomore, you know, it's, it's, it's years of work. It's not months of work. It's years of work, you know? And, you know, I, I yeah. want to credit you as part of that first LaSalle staff, man. Like, you know, you helped us get Tyrone and so many good players that helped make the program better. But, like, those years you were working for us, look at that, Bob. Don't worry about – but, uh, yeah, building a program is uh, is uh, 
a, a year by year, multi year thing. It's uh, it, everything in life takes multiple efforts, right? Like nothing happens overnight. You know, we, you know, the, the time that I, I spent with you, you know, you taught me everything I, I, I know now about, you know, how to run a program. Right, you know, because you gave me a lot of freedom, man. You gave you gave me a green light to 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 work guys out and recruit and do my thing. So, you know, I tell people all the time, my time spent at LaSalle is is what you know paved the way for me to be in the position I'm in today. And you know, I I love you, and I'm and I'm grateful for that opportunity. And and I was proud of this team watching you guys, because you know, even though. You know, I wasn't a part of the staff. I was I was connected to you guys because of the relationship that I had with the university and the people on this team. Yeah, Sam, Ty, Ty talked about this shot. Now watch Rel tie the game. Oh yeah, that's crazy. You almost forgot to look at the basket, dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy part of the game. That's a crazy, like, that's a crazy swing right there. I think that's a backburger right there for them. And now it's like a flat out even game until the floater. Man, that was tough. Tough shot. They, man, they're a good team. SEC tournament champs. They, and they're good in the lane, man. They had strong guys who could finish. See, that's, that's a big time. Right like, not losing the ball, huge deal. Where my man Coach Belly at? You ain't tapped Coach Belly in? Yeah, he's got, you know, he's an assistant at South Carolina, and they have a recruit in tonight. Okay. I should have te texted him what time. What time. <laughs> what time. <laughs> time. Man, that's good basketball, right? Ty Tariq. That's big time play right there. Big time. And that's the trust, man. You guys look for each other. You know, the yeah, whole thing has to pull us on when they're open, not after they're open. Great job. And, and like that, that boy, I thought it was going in, man. Hey. And like Garver said, it was on and off the court. I just think we was together. Like, we hung with each other every day. It wasn't no separate cliques in the team. Like, we all we all did the same thing. So, it was just like, when you got that, like, unity together, I, I think, like, you could beat any team, any, if any team like that. I think most teams that win is like that. Yeah. Did you get fouled on that play, Rick? I thought you did. At least I'm trying to get the call, and I think it helps us get a call next time down. Did you yeah, think you make a call, call later? Yeah. yeah. See, and then they call this this ticky tack one on. Uh, Tyrone. Yeah, the odds was against us, man. The rush started trying to help out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they give us all coming up here. They, now. they in the bonus? Huh? Oh, no. They going to the line? Yeah, yeah. see, that's crazy yeah, because as I, as I be gambling now, that'd be the rush, man. They be cheating, man. <laughs> that's just to get them to the line. That wasn't yeah. no fun. That was a bad swing. For us right here, skating <laughs> point of view. Basically, I think we get fouled on one end, and then they call it ticky tack. They missed a lot of foul shots this game. Yeah, they did. They, they, they weren't skilled. 
if they were skilled, they'd be another level up. Yeah, they just strong, man. See, that's why I think that was the, the call they gave us next. I think they they messed up a little bit. What are you guys thinking right now? I know what I'm thinking. What are you guys thinking? When I missed that, I was like down on myself after that. I thought it was yeah, I, I kind of messed up the game. Don't worry about it, because now it's just all about stops. Just every day, you know, we do our three stops in a row drills. It's and we're locked in and getting our stops down. I'm thinking about it in, in college. A minute isn't really a lot. Of, isn't really a lot of time. But when you're in the pros and it's shot clock 24 seconds. I mean, there's a lot of possession. And I remember being on the bench right here because I got sad. Coach Bradley told me, like, you're going to be good, man. You're going to make a good play when you get back in the game. Because I said, I missed the one and one. I messed the game up. Nah. I, I was thinking that. I was thinking that. I ain't never going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that, too. I was like, damn, I messed the game up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, just make a free throw. Ain't that so Hey, oh, you, which one I saw. Well, you know, once we go to the line, you cool big homie on the line, man. He's 90% yeah, from the line. He's it's money. You got, you got a six one guard, though. But he wins the game for us, helps us win the game. On you the know, when we go to the line, we was Gucci. I'm like, we Gucci now. Once we got to the line, got the court security easy points, man. I'm not even able to see this. That joint jumping too. Got to get our stops now. That's a good. Idea. All right, now again, I just didn't watch this game from the time we had it till yesterday. Watch what a bad call. That's supposed to be our ball. Could they, it's theirs, to, but watch this. So DJ falls out of bounds, but right now he doesn't have the ball. So the oh, ball yeah, is yeah. out of bounds. Like it, it should be our ball. Watch, there's a better angle. So look, the ball's in bounds. Now DJ falls out, but he doesn't have the ball. He's not out and of the, bounds. And the guy, the guy tripping him. So it either should have been that or a foul. And they were trying to get us with the okey doke, man. They want to try and let us money line them. Well, here's the shot clock <laughs> violation. And Rick, this mm. one's close. So I knew you guys would make a play, but right now we go five out just because I know we're going to have a mismatch, whether it's man or zone, and we don't have to play defense anymore. We're going to get the last shot. So we took Jarrell out and just spread him out, and you guys took it from there. Man, we held the ball for 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And you guys were so good with late-game situations, like when we won at Northeastern, going flat with you at the end, Tyreek. Like, we, when we wanted to go two-for-one or a last shot, you guys did a good job. So I knew we would get, yeah. we get, get the shot clock all the way down. And I knew with five guards, man or zone, we're going to have a crazy mismatch. And rest in peace, Maine, too, man. You see big Maine back there. So sad. People who don't know Jermaine Davis, who redshirted this year and had a great heart, uh, died in a shooting defending his little brother several years ago. Like, every day really is a gift. Thank you.
The crazy thing in this game, you could actually hear Steve Kerr say, like, if I had a team, I'd, I'd play like this and all that. that that's, that's the crazy thing. And now he's doing it with Golden State. There's the switch sides. And the audible we call right there. Five behind. Crazy. Everybody wanted us to win after that. I don't know how many. It sounded like the whole crowd said, yeah. Yeah, right. We only had like 12 fans. That could have been our crowd. <laughs> oh, God, that was a nice layup, bro. In the background. <laughs> oh, you already know it was a layup. Oh, that was a nice layup, so I ain't going to lie to you. You already know. <laughs> so, 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 so what I love yeah, most is hurt. this most about basketball is the feeling. Like, there's lows, but there's nothing like these highs, right? Yeah, it's nothing like that. Just, just talk about what this meant to you guys from an emotional, personal point of view. Uh, for me, it was a breath of fresh air because, I mean, for us to, to come that far, I feel like we, we came far, but and then we was winning that whole game. And I think, like, out of all the games that we had played up to that point, I was like, we can't lose this game. So I think when Ty hit that shot for me, it's just like, all right, then we on to the next round. Like, we really doing something that nobody believed that we could do. And we in the Sweet 16. And we just keep moving forward. We just keep being the odds. So coaching is a humbling thing because any good coach stands on the shoulders of their players. And that's why I recruited so hard. And Ty, I remember when I hugged you, I said, man, that's why I recruited you, because I just knew you would do great things. And, man, I just, it was well worth the wait to recruit all you guys who are on this call here. It's, uh, you know, we recruited you hard, and it's because we believe in you. And our belief was well placed. Yeah, man, that they, they, yeah, that team, man, that just like, and after that shot, man, I just, I just, I really thought we was going to win it. Because I thought we was going to play Ohio State. I said, we could beat them. And I th I just thought, after that game, I thought really thought we was going to win it because I just thought we wasn't going to lose after that. Well, listen, it's, uh, I love you guys all. Um, you know, these relationships last 40 years uh, plus. Uh, Ash, I love you, and we're all – can't wait to see your team this year and everything you're building and your friend and uh, yeah. uh, and we we love you believe in you totally and uh, you know players you know I'll be in touch with you texting Sean uh, Bloom you know I love you guys a any last words to whether it's our fans or to each other before we let you go uh, I just want to appreciate uh, give like a special thanks to Bloom because. Especially at the school, man, he been looking out for me, uh, on and off the court with agents. Uh, shout out the coach as well. Shout out the coach as too and the team. Appreciate you guys keeping up with me at the school, man. I just uh, uh, wish Ash none but luck, and um, and I know you're gonna get the team back where it's supposed to be, man. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, the whole South University. You know, the, uh, most importantly, I think the fans. You know, I think we had a, a, a great support system while we did. Uh, the fans, the coaching, uh, the teachers, everybody. Like, I feel like we had a lot of people in our corner that year. Not even that year, like the years before that. Uh, and I, like I said, I, like Ty said, I look forward to Ash coaching them now. I, I know for sure he's going to get them back there soon. So, like I said, I uh, can't wait for the day. Hey, when we watching this, watching another NCAA tournament video, we'll just start back in the tournament. Just to feed up what they said, you know, uh, thank you all for having me tonight. Um, having all us come back, you know, it was great seeing everybody, uh, you know, talk to the fans and, you know, talk to all y'all. And, uh, you know, I'm grateful to, to be here tonight, you know, through what's going on in this world. But, uh, it's great to, you know, be back and, you know, I wish y'all nothing but the best. You know, I hope LaSalle, you know, this year, you know, y'all 
do the same thing, you know, that we just was watching. I hope y'all can make the same run that, you know, we we did uh, in a, you know, back then. And, you know, I wish y'all nothing but the best and, you know, good night because I'm about to go to bed. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Garb. You know, uh, just wanted to say thanks, Coach G, for the opportunity. Uh, you know, just, just thank you. Thank you to all the players for uh, just being like a brotherhood. Um, it's definitely created some memories uh, that'll last the lifetime, um, some fond fun memories. And good luck, everybody, with their careers. And, and don't forget to vote, whoever's in the country, you know. Um, but yeah, be safe. Safe out there, guys. Thank you. How about Coach Blue, Coach Neil? I love you guys, and we're we're trying to put the group back together one more time for the next TBT. So stay tuned, and hopefully we can get everybody healthy. Definitely need that. Yeah, definitely. Great. Johnny, is Sean still here? Nope. Okay. All right, man. Well. We'll, we'll be in touch with everybody, okay? Thanks for having us all. Appreciate all right. you too, Coach Layard, man. Love you all. All right, guys. Yeah. Proud of you guys, man. This was this was refreshing to watch, man. This Wish you guys man. all uh, the best. Y'all. Going crazy in the background. He missed the Southwest <laughs> Philly floater. He's mad. If you're mad, he missed it. <laughs> all right, guys. I'm proud right. of you guys, man. Thanks for, thanks for joining. Nothing no, but the best. Y'all in the trenches right now. Salute y'all. <laughs>